Hello everybody, welcome back to this dead channel where I post stuff for fun sometimes when I feel like it. You might remember that sometimes I hold telephone games with my community, a uh, link to that description for the one a bit ago if you kind of want a summary of that. Well, the community kind of grew a bit more, uh, to the point where doing a traditional telephone game will actually take the better part of a year. And I like doing these games, I like engaging the community in this way, and kind of force a lot of creativity. So I wanted to do something, but we have to change it if we wanted to do anything. See, with the traditional telephone game, there's a bit of a problem with it in the form of everyone has to wait their turn, um, you kind of are just drawing what the previous person drew, really, you're not really allowed to make it super creative if, you know, for a traditional game, and uh, there's a couple little flaws when we have a larger size. So I had a bit of a list of things I wanted to do for a new game style that I wanted to experiment with everybody. So what I required in this list is I wanted everyone to be included at every stage. So everyone is drawing something all at the same time. There isn't anyone waiting for their turn. There's no just long delays. Everyone gets to engage. I also wanted everyone to be able to share what they made as they make it. With a traditional telephone game, you have to keep your stuff secret because if someone towards the end of the line got to see what someone at the beginning of the line made, that kind of ruins the ability of them to misunderstand what the art is and have it evolve. With this, I wanted it to really allow people to share and allow people to show off what they were proud of because that was something that, you know, I felt a lot of people were kind of upset at. I also really required that I wanted people to be creative. I love telephone. I love getting to see how a character will evolve slowly, but I also want to have a bunch of creative people be creative. So instead of just like, oh, draw the thing you got to draw before, I wanted to say, no, you get to like add and, and make it something new and cool and awesome. And on that note, I wanted it to be able to immediately trigger huge change. We had a telephone game between the one linked below and now, where really the character didn't change too much. And that was a little bit upsetting because it took like six months. Not like upsetting as in like, oh, I'm never going to do this again, upsetting, but upsetting as in like, well, that feels like six months of wasted time, doesn't it? Because we didn't get to see this huge, massive change for it. There's a reason I never made a video for it, right? So I wanted this one to incorporate just hard set in the rules. It's going to be really, really cool and interesting just immediately. Lastly, of course, I wanted this thing to not take six months to a year to finish. So I wanted to try to write it up in a way that would take a month in total time. That's it. I want to take a, a full month and that's with giving people a good chunk of time to actually get to draw the characters. With all this in mind, I made what I'm calling currently the trait game. I make a character that everyone gets to see. In fact, I posted up the character when I asked for signups with the community so that everyone got to know what they're doing going into it. And every artist that signed up got given a list of three traits from a massive shared list that everyone gets to see, but everyone only gets three from the list. Then each artist that got handed the traits has to incorporate as many of them into the character that they can. Once they've completed that, they send the art back to me. Once I have everyone's artwork, I send off the artwork from this first round to someone else in the game, and it becomes kind of like a game of telephone, where these artists just have the previous artist's artwork to make their character, not adding in anything, not doing this crazy new extra trade stuffs. They only have the original person's artwork to work with. After that second round is done, and all the artwork is handed back to me, I actually hand those artworks out to a third person in the list that didn't have anything to do with the previous two steps, and that third person tries to guess what traits were used for the original character there, and what the modifications might have been. The first two steps, the art steps, I give people two weeks to actually work on, and the third step does take longer than like a day, so this whole thing ends up taking around a month and it's actually been really really interesting and it satisfies every criteria that i wanted so let's actually jump in now we know the rules now we know what's happening now we know kind of how this works let's jump in and actually introduce the character that i made that i passed out to everybody this is tess 
Since not everyone is a character designer in my community, I wanted a rather simple design. People are going to be able to bolt on traits and extra stuffs to it, and if the character was this really complex, detailed thing with lots of patterning and crazy thing and body styles that people aren't used to, it would be harder to add on more traits, and that would also kind of make it a bit less fun and a bit less interesting down the line to say, oh, there's only one trait added into this, try to guess. It's like, oh, that's easy. So I kept her like kind of a simple patterning. I used a basic triad color set. It's a little bit of a change set of that, but that's not important. And I also, I, I have, okay, gonna be honest. I have a thing with these telephone games where I like doing more odd species as the core species. That might just be me being weird, but I didn't want to just like make a wolf or just a fox or just a cat for this, but I wanted something that people could draw well, people that are that they're more familiar with. So I ended up going with a maned wolf because the head shape and the body shape and stuff is pretty familiar. It's just kind of leggy and uh, it's still kind of it, it scratches that itch I have of just it has to be something a bit more interesting and it still feels exotic and it allows people to maybe push that or stretch the traits known for maned wolves to kind of make this whole thing a bit more interesting, a bit more compelling as the end result. So let's jump in with Applesmith. Uh, links to everyone who participated in the description, by the way. So he got handed Tess and the traits Magenta, Stuffed, and Dull. Honestly, I really like the approach that he went with. Obviously, they're now Stuffed Dull, which, you know, kind of works pretty well for the stuffed thing, but instead of swapping out the colors on the character, they actually made the stitching itself magenta, and that actually let them tone down the colors on the character itself to actually fit a more dull tone. It's actually pretty clever, and it actually allows for a very simple set of changes that got a really, really big effect on the character. I think that the magenta stitching probably makes the dull colorization a little bit not as dull feeling, but I mean, I still love the approach to this. Apple's artwork was handed over to Zulshi, who largely didn't change too much on the art, right? Totally fine to do that. There's no requirement that it has to be this huge, like, dramatic, I have to change the pose and add in all this extra stuff. If the end goal is to try and maintain the character going from one to the next, totally fine to actually just draw the same thing. Obviously, I would like to see, like, more character dynamicism and like the posing change stuff like that but it's a really nice way to make sure you don't accidentally change something on the character when the end goal is to try to maintain it so you know rock on zulji this artwork was handed over to daniel daniel rotwin to try and guess and he went with stuffed neon and cute stuffed is a given kind of makes sense from the beginning that stuffed would actually maintain throughout the thing neon too i mean the stitching i could totally see that as like as neon rather than just magenta. In fact, that actually kind of makes me wonder about a stuffed doll with like neon glowing stitching. I wonder if that's a thing. Um, and also stuffed dolls cute, that fits, right? So we got one of the three on this one, which totally just fine. I think this is a fantastic start to this game. Let's jump on over to the next one. Next up, we have Kitsuno Okami, who had to incorporate limbless, madman, and unclean into their artwork. Honestly, hot damn obvious route with having no limbs is like, you know, it's limbless, but making it that they were like torn up and battle worn and hurt to cause it being limbless is actually a really, really cool approach to it. The dirt and grime all over them shows that they have to drudge through the ground in order to get around anywhere. And just like they tore up the jacket and all that stuff, like really, really, really nice approach to try to get these, uh, these traits in. Um, the madman incorporation like just that face of just like completely being done with this and having this giant like robot tail with the hand on the end like an absolute mad person would make something like that you know that that's kind of that's fitting uh i feel there is a little bit of confusion that could be caused by that i'll approach that towards the end here of uh of this section but absolutely fantastic way to redevelop the character into a new form using the traits handed. Speaking of, this artwork was handed over to Boogs, who completely nailed the character. Like, 
every single trait that existed in the original form carried over into this. Even things that I felt were kind of a bit, like, not things that were from the original uh, trait list, right? Like, you know, torn up ears, mushrooms on the back, things like that. Those still made it through to the next form. Boogs was definitely aware of the shared list and didn't want to accidentally remove what a trait was. But Boogs didn't redraw the, the same pose and everything. Boogs actually took it into a new direction, having the energy cell still in the hand and still coming out of the tail and things like that. Still having that mad expression was seriously, Boogs absolutely nailed keeping the core of the character as absolutely best that they could. Boogs' artwork was handed over to MechAttack, who actually ended up guessing Mad Scientist, Limbless, and Fungi. I'm gonna say one and a half points. Mad Scientist is halfway there. So the fungi on the back totally makes sense that they would guess fungi from the list. Like giant robot tail and stuff, like that's mad sciencey. Full stop. And of course, it's limbless. They don't have limbs. So, I said earlier that there was possible confusion with having it be a robot tail. So, with the list that I made, I actually have a lot of things have a bit of overlap to them. The purpose for that being is that the guessing stage, I wanted to be a bit more fun, a bit more interesting. So, in order to make it more interesting, I had overlap. The overlap is intended for the artist to not strictly go with the first thing that comes to mind because there might be a couple other things on the list that that first thing might also apply to. So I wanted them to look at the whole list and be, well, maybe that one, maybe that one, maybe a little bit more critical thinking sometimes. That's not to say that Kitsuna didn't use critical thinking in this whatsoever, but uh, I think that the robotic tail probably threw a bit of a wrench into the plan of it being uh madman because mad scientist was on the list nonetheless these are absolutely fantastic pieces of art and uh, i'm really really happy to see these two kind of bounce off each other in this way star knights they added in all three of their traits into tests which was pumpkin rock and chartreuse i think this is a very genuine to the idea of the game uh, rock could be used for physical stones or with the genre. I actually didn't even consider the genre when I had making the list, so this is actually a surprise to me to see as well. Chartreuse is a color that I personally despise and it became kind of a joke in the community, so I had to add it to the list. Um, the really, really bright, stark color actually fits super, super well into the rock style, so I think that was a super, super awesome thing for Star to end up with, and that fits Star perfectly for having super bright colors with their stuffs um and pumpkin i mean pumpkin is an oddball one i threw a couple oddball stuffs into the list and i think that the pumpkin skirt look actually both fits the character really well it fits the look really well and it's uh it maintains that pumpkin look super effectively the only thing that i'm kind of a little bit maybe on with this particular piece is i don't know what's in her hand because there's actually an alcohol called chartreuse, but her tail is dripping, implying that it's currently like still drying from dye. So that could be dye in a bottle. So I'm not super certain, but that is the only thing I'm not certain on. And that also doesn't detract from the chartreuse given because there's other chartreuse elements on the character. This artwork is handed on over to Mech who ended up actually drawing it super well. They maintained the character really, really effectively. They added in the chartreuse hair and tail tip, even the little like black coming off of the tail tip too, which I thought was a really, really nice touch, kind of maintaining that it's still dripping. The pumpkin skirt kind of lost a little bit of the pumpkinness, but I still feel as though it maintains the overall feel super effectively. Um, and I mean, they lost a little bit of jewelry and the like, uh, headphones, earpieces. It's weird with furry ears, but can count as what there. Um, and I do see that Mech kind of registered the bottle, not as dye, but as an alcohol and is kind of having her rocking on properly, which fits the rock vibe super, super well. This piece was handed over to Kitsuna who guessed Chartreuse, 90s, and Lit. I can see all of this really, really easily. Chartreuse, obviously, it's super bright Chartreuse. If there's Chartreuse added into the image, 
is pretty certain that that one's going to be guessed correctly. 90s, you know, that 90s punk movement with like the bright colors and the uh, the jackets. Like I, I totally get that one. 90s fits super, super well. And that, that bottle came to bite us in the butt with lit because they thought they were getting lit, thought they were, uh, they were getting out there, you know? I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> One out of three isn't too bad when there's almost 70 options to choose between. You all did fantastic work on this set of images. Zolshi managed to add all three of their traits, yellow, stuffed, and crystal. I was incredibly happy to see stuffed show up twice in the list. And like I said, I randomized the whole thing. And I was concerned that people would think that they could, you know, read the list and eliminate options based on what other people might have shared earlier to be like, oh, well, maybe it could have been this. Oh, maybe it could have been this because this was used for that other thing. So just despite everyone, things can show up on multiple lists. Stuff showed up twice. A few of these showed up twice. But stuff was one that was super obvious. And I loved that just despite anyone who thought that they could eliminate an option or two. Now, this time they weren't turned into a doll, right? Not this inanimate doll or anything like that. They actually maintained them as a character overall and just had them filled with stuffing. Like, I appreciate the patches and everything to help maintain the appearance of them being a stuffed creature at just a glance. The character, like I said, they used a triadic color set, so yellow shifting it was possibly going to be a problem, but they actually were able to manage to make it fit the character super, super well. It's a really nice yellow tone they picked actually yellow is kind of an awkward thing that could very easily turn into like an ugly mustard or something this is this is a good uh good yellow they went with the crystal ball i didn't intend for a crystal ball when i was writing crystal as a list i was expecting them to have like crystals growing out of their body or something like that but no they went with a much more subtle crystal ball look instead of having like gems coming out of their eyes or something wild like that and I actually really, really appreciate that. Plus, good work on actually making that look like a proper gem crystal ball. It looks nice. This art piece was handed over to Kitsuna, who at maintained the character super, super well, actually. Almost every single element is still here. And they actually ended up adding in a bit more too, like with the tail floof. Holy crap, I freaking love that. Um, I actually would love to see this set kind of continue as an art telephone game. Just because, like, if it changed that much, getting a bunch of tail floof, kind of getting a little bit squirrel-like in a way, I'm really curious to see how that would develop. I mean, everyone got to see the original character, everyone got to see the Zolshi arts, so it wouldn't work as a telephone game going forwards. But this is one of those where I looked at it and went, you're an interesting set, and I really, really wish that uh, that would have continued in some way. But it's neither here nor there, they maintain the character super well. The every single element from the Zolshi piece is still here, including the crystal ball. Now it's kind of this floating, more magical, like interesting thing instead of just holding it. Uh, it was glowing before, but now it's glowing and floating, which really adds into it's a crystal ball, right? It's not just this like ball that I'm holding that's kind of a pearl colored ball. It's like, no, it's floating. Look, it's it's a thing. What are floating weird things like this? Crystal balls. Ooh. So that actually kind of can actually help elevate the original traits a little bit. And I think that's a really cool thing to see. This art piece was handed over to Star, where he actually guessed yellow, stuffed, and magical. Two out of three is not bad whatsoever. And I can absolutely understand magical instead of crystal in this context. Maybe we should have had crystals growing out of the eyes or something. Hey, maybe we could have gotten all three. Shame, for shame. I'm joking, of course. I think that these are a wonderful approach to the character, and they actually did something different with the traits that I put onto the list. Much like the rock from before, making crystal a crystal ball was actually something I did not anticipate, and that's why I really, really dig this art set. Neil, get the fuck in here. Making whole scenes and shit? Who do you think you are? Shading? Ever heard of minimum effort? All right, for fuck's sakes, dude. Like, tone it down a bit. Stop flexing on everybody. Absolutely joking, seriously, I really, really love the efforts made to really flesh out the whole piece and the person too. You got handed winged, wounded, and dull, and you made the conscious effort to not include winged because you wanted them to be in the aftermath of a disaster in the ring which hurt them, and that's awesome like they're in a dull home like it's kind of like muted colors it's not super fascinating or interesting character or anything like that 
and uh, you're like, no, we're going to hurt them too and get the wounded in there, but not like these battle scars or anything. No, they just, they had a loss in the ring. That's mind-blowingly awesome to see. And like wings would just get hurt because they're big and fragile things if they were in a fighting arena ring of any type. And I think that's awesome that you actually purposely didn't include that. Like, seriously, it almost seems like I should add in a thing of try to guess the one that wasn't used in the future just because of this. Honestly, and at least she has a cat, you know, she can she can uh, she can chill at home, recover for a bit. Just just uh, just relax for a while. She's got a cat to play with. She's got cat toys and like seltzer in the in the thing, maybe a white claw or two. Just just chill, Tess. You'll be back in the arena in no time, I'm sure. This artwork was handed over to Apple who again absolutely blew it out of the park like a full scene again in the bathroom of them tending to the wound on their leg in front of a mirror apple drew two tesses first person to do that and i cannot believe that both of you actually put in all of this effort for this the rules for this only really required that it would be a full body colored piece it didn't have to have shading didn't have to have a background didn't have to have anything else other than let people see the whole character and have the colors so the next person can draw it accurately and you both did full scenes the shading and all this personality and emotion and everything even apple maintained the defeated look of the character because that could be so important to the end result the only thing that i like would like to see a little bit better on apple's piece was the like pad on the leg isn't super visible i know they're interacting with it but it's not super clear what it is i feel but that's my only complaint, and it's still there, it's still visible, it's like, whatever. I think this is a great, great work that you've put into this. Boogs got handed Apple's piece and had to guess the things, and they went with genderless and wounded. I know she got pretty buff between the original thing and Apple's piece. Um, still though, genderless, come on, come on, Boogs, you should know better than, than that, jeez. Though that's a... Uh, that top does kind of compress a lot and uh i can i can understand that pretty pretty easily um you know i i tease with uh with poking about the genderless buff thing i can absolutely see genderless in this thing not having seen the previous artwork that uh neil had made and my only concern was the ice pack not being super visible and in this absolutely they guessed wounded correctly so I mean, my only complaint was completely dashed. Congrats, I was wrong. And one out of two, not bad whatsoever. Great work. Daniel Rotwind is up next here. They do uh, cartoonish stuff very, very often. That's their main take at the world. So I was super curious to see how they would approach the character. They ended up getting Moon, Neon, and Sun, which is kind of annoying a little bit because those, those things those are difficult ones for me to imagine how you would incorporate them directly in so it kind of feels like they might end up being more tacked on than anything else and i feel so that kind of shows i feel i feel like daniel might have had similar struggles that i had looking at the list when i handed them over like sun and moon i don't see super well here neon absolutely right they're walking on these neon pads that they're making they're holding up these uh neon orbs like neon totally fits I don't quite see sun and moon in how uh, how this is, but I have a tough time really imagining how you would add those in. Maybe change the patterning on the fur to be like sun and moon inspired or change the neon shapes to be... I, I, I I'm not really fully certain myself. This would be one that I would bounce around a little bit on to try and come up with something. And again, I also... The first idea is oftentimes not the correct idea with this game that's kind of designed to be like that. So... I think it was definitely an interesting uh, work in this, but I really feel as though it won't be carried over fully into the final thing. This artwork was of course handed over to Star Knights, who did Star Knights Flare and made it flary as hell. <laughs> Star does like really exaggerated pose and this over the top kind of expressions and everything, and that of course comes through. They're largely the same pose, but they're now like 
much more angry looking and like sassy and walking forward and doing this like i'm now going to use these magical powers on you and defeat you evil like overlord thing even with like the eye flare to it like i think the eye flare is a little bit much star i'm gonna be honest right you kind of went a little hard with the eye flare but it's uh it's definitely cool to see you adding on your starness to the thing also curious we got sun and moon and then we handed over to star to draw like is anyone else anyways this art was handed over to neil and he actually guessed wizardly madman and magical none of them came through in the end like really i feel some neon was a little bit more obvious than that one neil i'm i'm joking of course there's a huge list and it's hard to really nail down what they can be especially when Floating rings absolutely fits a wizardly and magical look completely. So those completely check out. Magical and wizardly actually are one of those two that they are purposely made with an overlap. So it's a little bit harder to tell between them. Picking both is a, is a risky maneuver, absolutely. And the eye flare absolutely fits a madman vibe perfectly. So it all checks out. It's just completely wrong. Come on, Neil. Um no one's honestly no one's at fault with this one right i think that this was a hard set to hand to daniel specifically to make and that's not a slight on daniel on in any way as well by the way in case anyone uh reads between the lines wrongly there um i just feel as though this with a totally randomized set of traits you are going to get some traits that maybe don't resonate super well with someone and i feel so this might have been one of those results and star of course exaggerates things up to 11 and while it still fits what it was prior the dramaticism ended up actually moving us a little bit farther away from the uh from the thing originally from the original traits so no one's at fault with this one and i still actually really enjoy seeing these i think that these are really interesting takes on tests with the traits used um, so yeah, this is just one of the results that can happen from this game set. We kind of have to expect these things going forwards as well. So I've known Positive Patience a little bit, and I've known that she has a very clever brain. So her approach of Tess, she was handed Ocean, Carnival, and Wounded. Nobody wants a broken clown, all right? That totally understands to drop Wounded. So she went with Ocean and Carnival as the main focuses of the piece. And I actually... Like, seeing how she's about to drop everything, I feel like if she was practicing, like, knife juggling or something, we might have been able to add wounded in, pretty understandably. Um, <laughs> however, that also uh, kind of comes with a couple of the caveats, doesn't it, as to what's about to go down here. Um, also, a lot of people got handed wounded. I just realized that, huh? Lots of people want to hurt Tess, or not a lot of people want to hurt Tess, I guess. Um, <laughs> geez, why... Randomizer, please be nice to the main wolf, why don't you? Um, the, like, carnival, totally fits. It's a circus clown trying to practice their act. Ocean, like, a couple of ocean elements on the outfit and uh, the colorization of the outfit itself. I don't know why, but the colorization screams ocean to me, specifically the frills on the leggings. I can't place why that is. That might be because it has a bit of a coral vibe to it, but it just really screams ocean to me. And I actually really appreciate that, that it's not this super dramatic hit you on the head with a hammer. It's ocean, it's ocean, it's ocean thing. It's a bit more subdued. I would still like to see a bit of ocean elements maybe incorporated into the plates, um, but that's kind of my only complaint in that regard. I feel as though this does hit ocean pretty well. This artwork was handed over to Neil, who figured that the plates had to be defeated post haste, and Tessa's hours of attempts to master this art are set before us in the form of the biggest pile of broken plates known to man. The ocean themes were a little bit lost, sadly, and I don't really know how this is going to be read. Um, so fun fact, uh, Neil had actually forgotten that it had to be a full body and handed me just the headshot from this scene, uh, about a few hours before the, uh, the time limit was up. Um, uh, don't delay in making your arts, everybody, uh, because Neil had to throw the entire body together very quickly. And I feel as though that is, uh that that might be why the body looks 
a little bit significantly different. Um, I love the art that was made. Actually, those colorizations is really, really cool. Um, but they did change it pretty severely from uh, the original artwork for this. For shame, Neil, spend all your time doing the full bodies for uh, full body shaded and massive scene pieces prior. You didn't end up uh, leaving yourself any time to actually do a regular full body this time. What's up with that? Kitsuna was handed this art piece who actually ended up guessing Carnival and Dole. I can understand Carnival. I mean, that one is a correct one, obviously. Dole's a little bit curious. So at first I was like, well, it's really bright colors. Why would you guess Dole? And then I realized that if I went to a carnival and the main act clown just fucking threw all the plates on the ground, shouted them and stood there in a pose, I'd be like, I, this is a really dull carnival. I'm not a fan of this one. And that actually kind of fits in that context. And I kind of like that it made me think of it this way. Um, so dull fits with just the seed for sure. Uh, one out of two is still correct on the guesses, and that is super awesome. Again, we have almost 70 different choices between the list, so getting anything correct is just a testament to nailing the character traits going forwards. Boo Gastro is here with the love of manies to share. Seriously, Boo actually really loves manies. He's asked to draw and buy main wolf a lot of times. Um, no, I didn't make this to cater to Boogs, I swear. He was handed Scarred, Advanced, and Ocean. I was, I was, I was a little nervous going into this one because Scarred, Advanced, and Ocean, I don't know where that would lead. Uh, boy, did he go hard modifying the character a lot down to their, down to their core. Like, they didn't just leave it as, like, bolted on extra stuffs or, like, elements that they could do or a personality trait. They're like, no, no, they're going to be a hyper-advanced seafaring like warrior priestess or something i fucking adore the changes to the character here they even actually like boogs you managed to keep a lot of the traits that i had put into the character consistent and maintained going forwards like the colorization on the fins on the back of the legs and arms and even the tail fins on the tail a rudder i just now realized that so it's, it's, it's like a rudder um like those things all keep the colorization that I put into the character originally. You added on without adding in new elements. You kept what was already there and just adapted that and grew it into fitting the traits that you were handed. And you added in a color swath, which is actually really, really appreciated and really cool to see. By no means required for this at all, but seeing that done actually means that you are looking out for the person next in the line and say, hey, I'm going to put some shading this or I'm going to put some stuff on this that might confuse things. So I'm going to give you a list of colors so it's easier for you to work with. The only thing I am a little bit maybe on this, like all the traits are here, absolutely. The only thing I maybe is I don't know what on earth is on her hips. Like obviously advanced, super advanced, that all fits. Is that to propel her through the water or something? I never asked actually. I probably should have, probably should have done that. You definitely maintained the traits on the character. And this was handed over to Daniel who I feel like dropped a couple of things here. And this is again one of those cases where I don't think this is Daniel's fault because Boogs does super large, hyper detailed pieces with a lot of like dynamicism and dramaticness to it. And Daniel's more of a cartoonist. So handing this off to that, there's going to be a lot of stuff that happens in between. Um, like all the scarring was actually lost and when I was asking people for the trait, uh, for to guess the traits at the end, uh, it seemed like Daniel did not realize that scarring and wounded were options, and uh, just didn't even think to add that in. I they probably saw it more as like battle wounding rather than oh that's a trait that's needed. Um, so you yeah, know the character ended up getting a lot like simplified. A lot of the elements are still here. A lot of the things that make the traits what they are were maintained and brought forwards. Uh, the only thing that was lost was Scarred. There's no way that's going to be picked up in the final guess. But the other stuff is still there. So let's see. Let's see what positive patients actually managed to guess. Ocean, Robotic, and Gender Swapped. They all make sense to me. Uh, robotic and Advanced are, again, one of those things that have a lot of overlap on them. Ocean, I mean, come on. it's It's got fins and shit. Ocean was a, Ocean was a given. And plus, she was handed Ocean for her traits. That was fresh in her mind as an option and seeing, oh, fins and stuff. Well, I mean, I know what Ocean could have done. 
Like, that all makes sense. And of course, a lot of the feminineness to the character was lost in this. So gender swapped, again, fits what we have here. Really fun to see how this chain went down with these two very, very distinct approaches to artwork and kind of the end result to it. And uh, honestly, if nothing else, that's actually a fantastic learning experience for this thing going forwards. I don't organize who is going to who. It's basically all randomized. I only adjust so that people don't get handed things that they might know the result of already. And that's it. So seeing this as a possible option, I mean, we have to keep these things in mind going forwards that you can hand someone a list and get a super amazing art piece out of it. And then it gets handed to someone who does amazing artwork, but maybe not so much with what they were handed. And that's actually a really fun thing to see too. Still, we got one out of three correct on this guess, and uh, definitely we learned a lot on this one. Last but not least, we have Mech Attack. Their iteration of Tess used Mad Scientist and Limbed. They unfortunately had to drop the Regal from the list they were given, which makes sense as I... How the hell do you add Regal in to Mad Scientist, right? Like... Uh, what's her name like the bubblegum queen or something maybe gone crazy as an inspiration but that's kind of that's kind of an odd thing to approach it as well uh so you know max uh, my roommate and we were at uh, they were discussing with me a couple of stuffs i didn't give any indication or any suggestion whatsoever because i never do whenever there's games like this but they were bounce they were just saying what ideas they were having and uh, they actually had originally thought of a chain of artworks where they were turning into a queen bee and like yeah that would have fit the regal really well but that would require that the next person actually do the whole list of artworks in order to maintain the look and maintain that like transformation i guess or they could have grabbed just the end thing and they might have lost mad scientist along the way so like mech ended up making the choice to just drop regal entirely not cause a huge amount of work for the next person which i absolutely respect um and yeah i i'm curious like anyone commenting here what are some suggestions you might have for adding regal in because i can't either like i can only think like a tiara right like it, i can only think tacked on extra elements and i'm curious if anyone has any ideas because i don't really have anything so, <laughs> looking at the character itself, though, um, the Mad Scientist is maintained super, super well with, like, the dropped vial, the lab coat, uh, also the giant fucking insect limbs coming out of their body, which conveniently actually lines up with the other trait used of, uh, of limbed, you know, that actually, you know, it's convenient how that works out this way. Um, it's, it, it's a really cool way to actually incorporate the two things directly. They're not just... You know, just so happened to be there, it's like, no, the mad scientist led to limbed. And that's super, super cool to see. <laughs> because, like, you don't expect that. I when, With this game, I always expect them to be tacked on elements or these different things that just so happen to be there. But in this case, it's like, no, no, they are directly related. You cannot have one without the other one being there. And that's actually really, really awesome. This artwork was handed over to Positive, who largely didn't change too much about the artwork, right? The pose is the same, the expression is the same, the uh, limbs coming out of the body is the same, but Positive's art style still gives us a very soft, fun feel to it. And, you know, that's actually kind of awesome to see. Like, they did basically the same piece but this is one of those cases where if this continued as a telephone game i could see some elements on this changing just because of the way that uh, she handles artwork the only thing i'm concerned about is well, two, two of these actually is mad is kind of only there in the expression and that like there could be something lost with that so this piece was handed over to Zolshi, who guessed Limbed and Mad Scientist. We got a winner, two out of two correct. We didn't get all three correct in any of these, but at the very last one, we were able to manage 
both of them correct. Congratulations to all three of you for the only one that got maintained throughout the entire game. And I still have no idea how to add in Regal safely, so if we did that, it'd probably be two out of three. And that's the game. Again, thank everyone who participated in this game so, so much. Uh, anyone who's watching this video, you can find links to the individuals down in the description below. I think this game is exactly what I was looking for with this community. It allows everyone to engage, everyone to do stuff, and it kind of forces everyone to think creatively and have to think of the next person in the game as well as the prior person in the game. There are some things that can be changed and not just fixed change, but actually some cool things that can be added in and messed around with. Like we can force more traits on the list in the beginning, like four or five, and you have to pick as many of them as you can. We can require that all of them are used or a minimum of three used if we go over three and even have more rounds of telephone in it, though that would require people not share their artwork, and that kind of defeats one of the goals I had, so I don't think personally we'd go with that one. Of course, there's also the extra fun challenge of first person gets handed one trait in the character, then it's handed to a second person who's handed one trait in a character that they have to add in to the previous person's character, and then a third person is added, handed a trait and, a, and the character from the second person, and they have to add in their trait, bringing us to a total of three traits, and that third one is handed to a person to say what the three traits are. Like, there's other iterations and adaptations that can be done to this to actually really mix it up in case it ever does feel stale in any way. I do still like that this only takes a month to complete, especially with everyone having two weeks to work, because that allows people to kind of take their time with it, think it through, and it works around their schedule. Technically, we could make this take less time if I gave everyone only a day to do the artwork, but I'm not a monster, so I'm not going to do that. But if you actually want to try this game out yourself, rules will be down below to what we use, so you can just copy paste it to your communities, as well as my entire list that I typed up for this, uh, all nearly 70 items, if you want to use that as well. Again, there's lots of overlap built in, there's a couple of oddballs built into it. You can, of course, adapt it and change it as you want. If you end up doing this game, uh, poke me. I'm really curious to see what your results are. You don't have to make a video like I do, but like, just kind of send me the artwork that you make. I'm genuinely really curious if you actually like take on the challenge if you do the game and to see what your friend group or what your community comes up with. And with that, that is the video. Thank you all so much for sticking around with this uh, lengthier one. Um, I kind of wanted to sit down and actually really dive into all the different stuffs. So, uh, excuse, excuse the size of this video, but I hope that you had a lot of fun watching this as I had fun making it and organizing the game. Um, I hope to make more of these videos in the future. I hope to do this game more in the future. Um, these take a little bit of time to actually record the stuffs and a little bit of effort to organize. So, you know, it might be slower or delayed or something else, but I do plan on making more roundups in the future. So stick around, uh, comment down below if you actually have ideas on what you can, of what you could add into the characters yourself, like how you could have changed something to make the end result more accurate, like the end guesses more accurate, I should say. Again, that step was just for fun, but it is interesting to see how another person looks at a character when you have an intention going in. But with that, I am out of here. Have a lovely day, everybody, and goodbye. I'll see you in the future.